Let's talk about CAR T-cell therapy. It's a treatment approach that modifies cells from our immune system so that they have the ability to recognize and kill cancer cells. But to understand how the treatment works, we first need to understand those immune system cells, called T-cells. T-cells are white blood cells that are vital to the immune system. Their mission is to search for and destroy foreign substances in the body, also known as antigens. Sure, T-cells are well equipped to take on an antigen that is foreign to a person's body, like a cold virus, but cancer is a different story. Here to explain why is Dr. Marcella Moss. Blood cancers like lymphoma and leukemia occur because normal blood cells undergo changes or mutations that turn them into cancer cells. Because these cancer cells begin as normal cells, they're recognized as cells by the immune system and our T cells. In other words, they aren't identified as foreign and therefore aren't perceived as threats. This allows the cancer cells to grow. Researchers have studied ways to help the immune system recognize cancer cells as a threat. That's where CAR T-cell therapy can help. First, blood is drawn from the body and T-cells are separated out from the rest of the blood. They're then shipped to a facility where scientists add a gene into the T-cells. This gene gives them instructions to develop an artificial receptor called a chimeric antigen receptor, or CAR. Chimeric antigen receptors allow T-cells to recognize and bind to antigens, or proteins, on the cancer cells. Hence the name CAR T-cell therapy. The gene for developing CARs needs a way to get into the T-cell, so a vector, which is often derived from viruses, is used to deliver the gene into the cell. Don't worry, all the viral genes are removed, and the vector is modified to only deliver the gene. The modified CAR T-cells are returned to the patient's hospital, where they are then injected back into the person's bloodstream. The CAR T-cell receptors recognize the cancer cells by binding to the antigens on them and killing them. So far, CAR T-cell therapies have been approved for certain instances of adult lymphomas and pediatric acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which applies to children and young adults. Unlike most cancer treatments, which are administered every two to three weeks, CAR T-cell therapy is typically given only once. Currently, CAR T-cell therapy is viewed as the only FDA-approved secondary option for cancer treatment. Patients are not eligible for these therapies unless their cancer does not go away after two or more lines of systemic therapy, or the cancer returns after two or more rounds of standard care, such as chemotherapy. The long-term benefits of these therapies are still being tracked. The results show many positive outcomes, like sustained remission at much higher rates than standard of care treatment. But there are also potential risks, like an adverse event called cytokine release syndrome. During the therapy, immune system cells may become stimulated and release chemical messengers called cytokines. Too many cytokines can result in fever, trouble breathing, low blood pressure, and can even be life-threatening. In the event of a severe case of CRS, there is a treatment that can resolve in most patients. That means patients are carefully monitored post-treatment. But once the tumor is gone, which occurs in about half of lymphoma patients, they may not need further cancer treatments. It's important for an individual's care team to evaluate the relative risks and benefits of CAR T-cell therapy and other treatments. For more information and resources about using CAR T-cell therapy to help fight blood cancers, visit ASGCT.org.